In this video, I'll give you a full walkthrough of the app ZY Cami that you get to use with the all new Cyan Smooth Q3. Hey, what's up guys? Julian from SmartphoneFilmmakingPro.com here. The ultimate online course about smartphone filmmaking. And you know, you guys keep asking me about all these gimbal apps, you know, about the DJI Mimo app or the ZY Cami app. And today is finally the day where I will give you a walkthrough through the ZY Cami app that you actually get to use with the all new Cyan Smooth Q3. And make sure to watch till the end because there I will actually share a little secret with you guys. And in case you would like to see a full walkthrough through the DJI Mimo app, make sure to check out Smartphone Filmmaking Pro because there inside the course I do have one. And in case you have not seen it already, we did change our prices so you can now get started for just $5.99. So if you are interested, if you want to step up your smartphone video game, definitely check it out. But now I would say let's hop into the ZY Cami app and I'll show you how it works. So when you download the ZY Cami app for the first time, you do need to register your phone and you need to kind of like sync those two up to be able to use this. You know, it's actually very simple, so I will not do this actually in this video. If you can read, you can definitely do that. So yeah, I'm now actually already in the ZY Cami app. I have registered my phone and I have logged in and this is what it looks like. And you know, actually, if you want to start shooting, you just have to tap on this little camera icon at the top left. This will bring you into the shooting app. At the bottom, you have different modes that you can pick from. You know, by default, you are in the, in the standard video mode. You could switch to photo. You could go to panoramic mode, where it actually just by, you know, pressing a button, it will automatically create a 180 degree panorama photo. It actually works pretty good. I've tried it out. If you're into that, if you like panoramic photos, this is definitely awesome for you. You can also dial in on how many degrees it should do if it's uh, 180, 240, um, whatever you like. I'll just, you know, for demonstration purposes, we'll show you what it looks like with uh, 180 degrees. So you just, you know, tap on there. And now the gimbal is actually just doing its thing. And it might take some time, might take a minute or two. It might take some time, you know, it's doing um, eight photos in total. Um, and yeah, I actually won't show you this photo that I'm taking right now because the studio is looking nice this way, but not in that way. And yeah, so actually just finished doing it and yeah, it looks actually looks okay. So next up, let's go to slow motion and there, like the name up already applies, you can shoot some slow motion footage. Um, what I do not really like about this slow motion mode is that you cannot change on how slow the footage should be. It by default shoots on my iPhone 12 Pro, shoots in 1080p and slows it down eight times, which is actually 240 frames per second. But yeah, you cannot change anything. So I actually see no reason why you should use this slow motion function over the one from your standard camera app because actually you know, you can change all the modes and so on, actually just using the, the, the mode button. So you do not need to use the app, but more about that later on. So next up is, is dolly zoom. And what a dolly zoom is, this is also something that you could do easily yourself, even without the app. Um, basically, you're walking either towards someone or you walk, you're walking away from someone or from something and you're actually zooming in the opposite direction. So if you're walking towards someone, then you are zooming out. And if you're walking away, you're zooming in. And this creates this cool effect, you know, where the subject is always staying more or less at the same spot and also at the same, you know, kind of like size but the background is changing and this creates this, you know, epic um, scene that they are using in the movies. It's a nice feature. To be honest, I've never ever used it because, you know, I just feel like it's nothing special because everybody can do this and it's just so overused on social media because everybody can do this. So yeah, that's actually the reason why I never used this, but you could actually pick between two, two different modes, tip on confirm. Then you actually, you know, just um, draw a circle around the thing that you would like, you know, to to track for your for your dolly zoom. And then you just press record and you're moving back. And then it's actually creating the dolly zoom for you. And this is what it looks like. So yeah, as you can see, I'm moving back or I'm sliding back with my office chair 
and you know the the monitor on my camera is staying at the same position and also in the same size so yeah this is what this effect does like i said it works nice but i personally i'm just not a huge fan of it all right so next up you can go to the time lapse mode and this is actually a cool mode where i would actually use the app combined with the gimbal um, what you can do you can see at the top here you can actually you know you can dial in the the intro well so if it if it, the iphone or if your phone takes a photo every second every five seconds and so on so you just tap on this so actually i just thought that you can change the the interval and so on but it seems like you can't so you can only dial in the path but still this is something very cool um, you can create kind of like keyframes like you would do in a video editing program so i'll just set this as a starting position then I'll slide this, you know, there, set another keyframe, then also, you know, down and then, you know, back again. And now this is my path. And yeah, if I would actually, you know, press the record button, then it would automatically do this, um, do this motion that we just dialed in and it's taking one minute and the final clip will be four seconds. So yeah, this is actually something that is really cool. And I'll now play you a sequence of what a moving time lapse looks like with this setup. So yeah, I actually think this looks kind of cool. Um, at the top here, you can also change the resolution. Um, it will always automatically create a video for you. You know, if you were using a proper camera or actually a proper video shooting app, then it would actually store the JPEG images or even the raw images. And then you would be able to get even a higher quality video because you know the photos are just higher resolution they are higher resolution than 4k but still you know for the normal consumer i think this is still going to be very cool and people are going to like this and last on this um on this list you have a hyperlapse mode and hyperlapses are moving time lapses i actually do have a separate video about this in the course and i think also on the youtube channel where I actually show you how you can manually create hyperlapses with your phone with a gimbal like this and with an app like this. Um, it definitely helps you. However, I also have to say that the results won't be that good compared to if you were doing it yourself. But I will also play you a hyperlapse that I took with the setup right now and I think it's looking pretty good. Um, basically, it also works very simple. Um, you just pick something you just also again draw a little circle around it and then the phone will try to keep this spot always at the same position so if you are walking you know then the phone will keep this spot at the same position and yeah like i said i'll play you a little clip that i took with the setup and i think it looks pretty cool um, and there you can also change the resolution unfortunately you cannot even use 4k why it's like this i have no idea don't ask me but yeah this is also something that i do not really like about the dji memo app and also the that why cami app you are just very limited in certain areas you know the phones these days are capable of producing very high quality footage but those apps limit it so yeah but again more about that later on and now actually what i did not show you yet is just the the standard video mode and what um, settings you can change there so like i said before this is how it looks like when you open the app up for the first time or whenever you open it up basically um, at the top left you can actually go back into this menu if we tap on the little photo icon you come back into this menu um, the second button has a little m on it and this is actually where you can you know dial in all your settings manually so you can change between um, the different isos and the shutter speed um, in case you would like to learn how you can manually expose images, you know, to get some certain looks, you know, to just become a better filmmaker overall. Like again, definitely check out Smartphone Filmmaking Pro. We do have tutorials about that in there. Um, and you cannot change the aperture on phones, just to mention it. And in case you're a beginner or you do not care about all this stuff, you can also go into the auto mode. Um, next up, you can pick between your video resolutions and also the frame rate and i also heard from many of you guys that on android phones um, the app limits the phone even more than it is on the iphone you know with my iphone 12 pro i can actually shoot at the maximum resolution and also at the highest frame rate at least in 4k 
but it also limits the quality. You know, I will show you actually two different clips. One I shot with a native camera app and one I shot with a DJI Mimo app. No, I shot it with a ZY Cami app, I'm sorry. And I'm not sure if you will be able to see the difference on YouTube because of the compression. But when you are watching those clips back on a big screen and even on the iPhone, you can actually see that the quality is worse on the ZY Cami app compared to the stock camera app. So it definitely limits it and it definitely does not use the Dolby Vision HDR on the iPhone and I'm sure or actually I know that this is also the exact same thing when using Android phones. So just be aware whenever you are using these gimbal apps you will always lose some quality. And this is actually the reason why I personally am not a huge fan of those apps and that's why I actually never use them. But let's finish the little tour. Um, yeah, next up you have some glamour effects that I would never ever use so I'm not even going into them. And at the top here, you have three different modes. Um, you can pick between walking and running. Actually, you know, it changes a little bit on how, on how sensitive it is on your motion. Um, actually, I have always left it at walking because it worked very good for what I was using. And even when I was running with the gimbal and I was in this walk mode, it still worked out pretty well. Um, next up is this follow mode. Um, yeah, currently I am in the L mode and if in case you would like to access the vertex mode where you can actually, you know, spin the gimbal, you can only access this mode with the app. And when you are in there and you just, you know, turn the, the, the little joystick, you can actually, you know, rotate your gimbal in a 270 degree angle. Let's go back in here. Um, you can also change the joystick speed. I have it at medium, but I actually prefer it slow because, you know, it's just a little harsh sometimes when I change those settings. And below the joystick speed, you could also change the zoom speed. However, I do not care about the zoom speed because when zooming on a phone, you are always zooming in and out digitally, which will always result in a loss of quality. Yes, the phone does have three lenses and your phone maybe even has four. And and at some point it does switch between the different lenses, but everything in between will be digitally. So yeah, I would just not recommend to use these zoom rockers to get the best quality possible. And actually this menu looks kind of small, but you can actually, you know, um, scroll down a little bit to have more options. You could invert the pan and the tilt control. For me, I do not mind. Then you can actually, you know, um, dial in what, what should happen when you press the M button. Um, I left it at default. And in case you run into this problem that your gimbal is, you know, not leveled perfectly anymore. And you can actually, it doesn't matter if it's balanced perfectly. At some point, you kind of like just lose this horizontal level. You can just go in there, go into auto calibration. It says, please put the device on a flat surface. It is. Just click on confirm and then it will take like 10, 20 seconds and it will do its thing. And then your horizon should be back again to a perfect level horizon. So yeah, now it says gimbal auto calibration succeeded, confirm, and that's actually it. So yeah, there you have it guys. These are the most important features inside of the ZY Cami app. Um, you could also keep on scrolling to the left to have some smart features and live features and so on. But like I said before, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of these things where, you know, everything kind of like happens at the press of a button. You guys probably know that I am a professional filmmaker and I like to teach you guys how to actually, you know, properly film with your phone to get the best shots and the best videos possible. So you can use them, don't get me wrong. I'm not mad at anyone for using them. I personally, I just do not like it. It's not my style. And if you join Smartphone Filmmaking Pro, you will see that I actually prefer, you know, to really show you how you can film properly with your smartphone to get the best quality videos possible. And like I said at the beginning, I will now share a little secret with you guys. I mean, you guys probably know it already by now, but I actually never ever use any of these gimbal apps. It doesn't matter if it's the DJI Osmo Mobile 3, the OM4, the Cyan Smooth 4, the Q3, whatever gimbal it might be, I actually have never ever used these apps, like professionally or when I was actually shooting. I have used them, you know, for demonstration purposes because you guys are interested in it, 
but actually when I am shooting, I never use it. The reason for that is, like I mentioned before, the loss of quality. You know, with a phone and with the possibilities that these phones have these days, I just wanna get the absolute best quality possible. And you know, those cool features like, you know, the dolly zoom and so on, they are nice, but I could also get the exact same results, you know, without using the app and I can even get higher quality results. You know, for very certain scenarios, when doing a hyperlapse maybe, or when doing the moving time-lapse, you know, then it makes sense to use this app, but for everything else, I personally, I just always use Filmic Pro or just the stock camera app because there I just have a better quality overall. And actually many people of you do not know that you can use, you know, just the stock camera app or Filmic Pro with these gimbals. And actually, yes, there is no problem whatsoever with Filmic Pro and also with the stock camera app, you can even use the button to start and stop your recordings. And yeah, actually this is all what I personally need. Um, maybe you guys see this different than I do. Um, I would love to hear your comments on this. Yeah, but that's basically it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value out of it. Let me know down below in the comments if you use the ZY Cami app or the DJI Mimo app or what you use to shoot. And yeah, as always, if you guys have any further questions, please let me know and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.